this is gonna be a fun one. So today I am talking about my five worst hiking mistakes. I'm gonna be sharing these stories because I think you'll be able to learn a lot from them. I also think it was just gonna just be fun and anyone who's a fan of the hiking films is gonna get a little bit of niche information that might make them look at some of my other hiking films uh, a little bit differently. So number one is going off trail. So while I was hiking by myself in the Peak District for a few days earlier on in the summer, I decided that I wanted to go to a very famous spot a very well-known area. I think it's called Winnets pa Pass. It's a very cool area, it's very pretty and very unique. After I checked out that area, instead of going back on myself and returning back to the main path that I had gone on, I decided that I was gonna forge my own path and follow what I thought was a trail that I thought had been used by many, many people, but actually it just was not. The route then took me down a really steep cliff. There were footholds in it, so I thought it would be safe, but it wasn't. I got about halfway down and then I slipped and I slipped about two to three meters and I slipped down on my on my side, on my leg. I put my arms down immediately. Uh, and thankfully my massive backpack over there, this is at the time when I was rocking the Burton backpack, that took a lot of the damage from me. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, some of my camera stuff did get a little bit scraped up on the inside, but I was okay from the top half, that's what matters. But the bottom half, I had a bruised bum, I had a, a cut up left leg. It was really, really grim. But the best thing is, is that I got it on camera. So let's roll the clip now. Um, this is what happens when you go off the trail. So yeah. As you can see, it was not an ideal situation. And what I learned from that is don't go off the trail, or at least if you go off the trail, return back to the trail. What I had tried to do was go and see this really pretty area, this very unique spot that everyone should go and see. And then I then decided to keep moving forward as opposed to double back on myself and go back the way I came. That was a mistake. And trust me, when I say that I haven't made that mistake again, I can promise you I haven't. I do not leave the trail on the hikes that I go on now, especially because I'm by myself. And had that fall been worse, I could have been in a really, really sticky situation. So yeah, learn from me, learn from that mistake. Do not leave the trail. All right, number two. This one's kind of funny as well. Not buying waterproof trousers. So I've got a nice waterproof Patagonia jacket, but for a long time, I didn't own any waterproof trousers. I just figured, you know, they're my legs. They're not gonna get wet, I'll be fine. And it's so idiotic of me. I don't know why I didn't do it, but I went on a hike that went into my local countryside and the weather looked okay, but it didn't look great. I thought it could be a moody vibe. I thought it could be quite cool, but about halfway around, the rain came down like crazy and my black cargo trousers got completely drenched and when I say they felt like a towel, like I after I took them off, I literally wrenched it and water came off just like a towel. It was ridiculous. But before I could do that, obviously I was out in the middle of the field and the rain was coming down loads and I was absolutely soaked. I thought I'd be fine. It would be a couple of showers and I would get through it and I would dry off, but no, those trousers don't dry quickly. And I just got so cold so quickly because the wind was harsh as well. I then had to cross a bog because the path I was going on, I lost it because it was raining. I couldn't see where I was going. So yeah, key takeaway from that is, well, one, don't hike in the rain if you can avoid it. And two, wear waterproof trousers because I had to bail on that hike. I literally, I said after that, I was so cold, so soaked. I was like, screw this, I'm done. Uh, and I went over to like a gas station and called a taxi and just like went home. It cost me a lot of money, but it was the right thing to do. Don't get me wrong. You shouldn't hike in a dangerous situation. You shouldn't hike if you're cold or if you just don't feel good anymore, like you should stop and, and, and bail out if you can. It's definitely the right thing to do. Cool, so my other biggest mistake is being overconfident with my wild camping abilities. As you probably know, if you've seen a few of my videos, I actually haven't done any wild camping before. But uh, recently I went on an 87 mile solo hike along the national trail, the Ridgeway, that starts at Overton Hill and runs 87 miles all the way up to Ivanhoe Beacon. It was a tremendous hike, an amazing experience. I absolutely loved it. But ahead of time, I was quite confident. I was a bit cocky. I thought, oh, this is gonna be the, this is gonna be the trail that I'm gonna do wild camping in. With no experience of wild camping, I decided I would give it a shot on a four day through hike which is idiotic to be honest, because I've never tried it. I've never, you know, braved it. Planning on just diving straight in, but it was stupid, literally. At the end of the first day, I had hiked 20 miles and I'm telling you, you couldn't have paid me to sleep in a tent. Like I was so tired. I just needed, 
a proper bed. And that was a big mistake because what I should have done is realize that ahead of time and I should have booked my B&Bs ahead of time. Because now I face the problem that not only do I only have all of my camping gear with me, that's probably like 10 kgs in my bag, but now I have to book all of my B&Bs on the fly and that's expensive. Ideally, when you go on a through hike like this, you wanna book as far in advance as you can because B&Bs, like everywhere, start hiking up their prices the closer you get to the time. So yeah, that was a big mistake. Don't be overconfident in your camping abilities and your wild camping abilities. Just, you know, know yourself, test yourself out, and that's what I'm gonna do moving forward. I'm gonna do one or two nights here uh, wild camping and then maybe come the summertime I'll do a few big through hike uh, wild camping but for now I'm just going to stick to B&Bs and I'm going to stick to day hikes but yeah learn from that please please learn from that save yourself some money because I spent like you don't even want to know how much money I spent on B&Bs for that trip you really don't so mistake number four is not taking hand warmth seriously when I climbed Mont Blanc a couple of weeks ago actually we were told to bring three sets of gloves a liner a medium and a heavy and i decided no i'll just bring a medium i'll be fine i'm gonna be filming i need my fingers anyways but that's a big mistake if you're climbing anywhere in the mountains like whether it's mont blanc or snowden anywhere have the right gloves like if your hands get cold in my mind there's literally no coming back from it especially as i've got bad circulation in my hands and my hands when they get cold they stay cold but th thankfully i didn't actually fall into any trouble on that trip our guide Fabio corrected me immediately and said like, no, you need to buy this set of liners, this set of medium warm gloves that have like a leathery grip and this big set of ski gloves that are gonna keep you warm when we're on the very top of the mountain. Obviously, I don't think you need those ski gloves if you're climbing Snowden, but you need to just like take glove warmth seriously. That's a big key takeaway I will have from that experience is like hand warmth is so important and if you mess that up then you've messed up your whole trip because if your hands go blue and you get you know hypothermia you're like you're coming down it doesn't matter if you can walk 30 miles or 40 miles a day if your hands are cold your hands are cold so you need to take that seriously and you should learn from that so number five is being cheap with gear when i first started hiking back in january i was quite cheap i didn't really want to spend any money on anything and i just wore what i had and i just used what i had uh, which is fine to begin with, but the more you do hiking, the more you should invest in your kit. Because the more you do hiking, the further out you're going to go, the more ambitious things you're going to take on. And in correlation to those bigger experiences, those bigger expeditions, you should be investing in your kit more and more. For example, it comes down to not buying the All Trails app, like the professional app. I didn't buy that for like two, three months when I first started hiking, which is such a silly mistake. I was sort of half using my Wi-Fi, half using screenshots to get around when really I should have bought the full-fledged version of that app immediately because that way I could have downloaded the maps and I could have gotten around a lot easier. Uh, when I did my hike to Wendover, this actually did happen to me. I lost data, I, lost, I didn't have enough screenshots, I was literally just walking in the blind. I didn't have a map or a compass, which is all stupid, to be honest. But I will defend myself by saying, you learn this through the process. You can't teach wisdom. You have to learn these things for yourself. But I hope that this video is giving you at least a little bit of insight before you make the same mistakes I did. Don't cheat yourself out because this is your safety and this is your fun and it's so worth it. There's nothing better than investing in yourself. You can invest in stocks or you can buy experiences or spend it on alcohol or you can invest in yourself. And investing in hiking kit is amazing, especially as if you invest in the right stuff, it can last you for years. It can last you for a lifetime. Some of the kit that like Patagonia sells that has like a lifetime warranty, isn't that incredible? At the end of each hike, make a mental note of what went well and what didn't go so well. And always, always, always try to learn from your mistakes and always, and also learn from your winnings. What what made you win? What made it go well? Oh, by bringing that extra bit of food, I actually had a better time. By getting that better coat, I had a better time. What can I learn from that? Okay, I'm gonna bring even more food or I'm gonna buy more things from the com same company that that jacket is from and so on. Always assess your actions and always look to improve. That's what I would say. But yeah, I hope this was helpful. Let's have some fun. Uh, tell me about your worst hiking experiences in the comments down below. Let's all open up and share our worst experiences. In fact, I'll even leave an additional worst experience in the comments down below that you will only be able to see if you go down to the comments section. So like the video, comment down below, tell us what happened, let us know. And if you're new here, subscribe, join us. We would love to have you as a part of our community, as a part of our hiking adventure and uh, cinematic filmmaking tribe. We would love you to be here. So yeah, come and join us. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.